This is the daily video update for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. For the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. This is the Tuesday exactly two weeks before the federal election on November 3rd. So a few things in these last two weeks. First, IRS regulations are such that the church cannot endorse, campaign, or oppose any particular candidate for higher office. That is a really good rule. Within Unitarian Universalism, our, our founding documents have a thing called the Conscience Clause, saying essentially that the dictates of individual conscience can and do trump collective statements about belief. This is clearly a part of the tradition of liberal theology that Unitarian Universalism comes out of. But what Unitarian Universalism is not particularly quiet about is this. Our faith holds the democratic process to be centrally important. Our polity, our theology and practice of how the church with a capital C should be organized, is fundamentally democratic. We believe, I believe, that there is a sacred quality to the decision of a democratic body deliberating and making a choice. It is how we pass budgets in our church, it's how we call and ordain ministers, and it means that we engage with the democratic process outside our walls as well. 91-year-old Helen Merrill, in an interview recorded for the StoryCorps project last week, put it this way. Helen has voted in every single presidential election since 1948, when she was 19 years old. I've only missed one time, she said. That was a long time ago. I missed a school board election, she said. She sent in her ballot for the November election this week, saying, To me, it's almost a sacred thing. Going to the polls, no matter how you feel, is the, wh is the one way in our country where every person is equal. My vote counts as much as someone who is a multi-billionaire, who is a rock star, or a movie star. My vote at the polls means just as much, and that's really important to me. Now, that is not to say that voting is everything. We know that there are systemic barriers to voting in this country, and I will be the first to say that voting is only the most visible expression of organizing and activism. In some ways, the most important time to effect change and bring justice is the day after all the votes have been counted. But voting happens first. And voting is of central importance. So if you are in Nebraska, there's a decent chance that you've already voted, but if you haven't, here's a few dates over the next two weeks. You can still register to vote in person at the elections office until Friday, this Friday, October 23rd. You can also request an absentee ballot until this Friday, October 23rd. In Nebraska, you don't need a reason to request an absentee ballot. So if you're concerned about the pandemic and don't feel comfortable going to the polls in person, you have until this Friday to request an absentee ballot. If you do have a ballot, you can mail it in, you can deliver it to the elections office, or if you're in Lincoln, you can drop it off at one of our public libraries here in town. You can also vote early at the county election office, which is 601 North 46th Street from now until Monday, November 2nd. And you can vote on Tuesday, November 3rd at your polling place. And lastly, you can track the status of your ballot at this link, votercheck.necvr.ne.gov. That's a lot of information, but the core message is this. Vote. Vote for the presidency, vote for Senate, for the House, for natural resources districts, ballot initiatives. This, this two-week period is where every voice is heard. It doesn't matter if it's in absentee or in person. What matters is that you make your voice heard. Two weeks. See you tomorrow.